In 2030, NASA plans to retire the International Space Station. Launched into orbit in 2000, the station has begun to show its age, from equipment failure to air leaks. Humans are not leaving space, though. NASA has partnered with numerous companies to design and build private space stations, which NASA will lease space on. These commercial stations represent a new phase of space exploration and inhabitation, with proponents of privatization saying it will lead to lower costs, more research and development, and a robust space economy, and critics pointing to the risks, like lack of accountability, labor issues, environmental damage, and more. The privatization of space isn't new. Since the 60s, companies have designed components and systems for NASA and launched thousands of government and private satellites. In the last decade, companies like SpaceX, Boeing, and Blue Origin have taken giant leaps and begun shuttling cargo and astronauts to and from the ISS on their own rockets. The private sector U.S. aerospace industry has shown to be very capable, both technically and financially, to be able to do some of these activities themselves, maybe with a little bit of help from NASA. But today, with the ecosystem of all the different companies and interests and business activities and ideas that are going on in low Earth orbit, it seemed to be a good time for NASA to sort of step back and let private industry really take more of an ownership role and for our sites to be moved deeper into space either the Moon or Mars, where there may not be as clear an economic potential for those other actors. So we have established a series of partnerships with a variety of companies that want to build commercial space stations where we're just one of many customers. They might have an area over here that's more geared for tourism and maybe an area over here that's more geared towards scientific discovery. And they can all be housed in this destination that we hope will be commercially sustainable. International docking adapter on the road. Copies, two meters. Two meters, we heard chop call, the crew hands off point. Axiom's mission really is to make space available to all of us. One meter to go. It begins with missions to the International Space Station. Ultimately, in 2024, our first module arrives. About six or eight months later, we add a research manufacturing module. Dragon, SpaceX, on the big loop, contact soft capture. and soft capture complete. About a year before ISS to retire, we'll bring up our big power and cooling module and we'll ring it out. And then when ISS is getting close to retire, we move everything over and then we'll separate. In order for the governments to keep exploring beyond and beyond beyond, they really need commercial, for lack of a better word, come behind them, provide the infrastructure so they can utilize that part and go on. So the same is true in space. And if we don't do that, government won't be able to afford exploring beyond low Earth orbit because it's so expensive to own a spacecraft, particularly a government-built spacecraft. It's necessary, it's important. The LEO economy doesn't exist unless the government gets out of the way and lets commercial industry do their thing, but they have to do enough work to show industry that there's a potential to make money. There are certain entrepreneurs and policymakers who sort of jointly believe that space is the next frontier to be sort of privatized and exploited. And the US government should have a role in helping open this up, helping pave the way for the private sector to get in there and create a new market. I mean, one of the reasons that privatization in general can be a nightmare is because it removes responsibility from the collective good and puts it on like the onus of a private company. The goal of any private company is to profit, not to make life better or help the citizenry. There's all these different goals that enter once you privatize something that don't exist when it's a public sector operation. When we evolve as a species, we've got to learn to live off the planet. The frontier really is space, and we will always as a species yearn to go explore the frontier, but also just as a way to survive, we need to figure out how to live off the planet. We imagine the city in space eventually. People come to work for several years, they bring their families, the families can have schools and theaters and parks in this big rotating section. All the companies that are involved in these space enterprises, they have long-term objectives. If you look at Elon Musk, he wants humanity to be a multi-planetary species so that we can't have an extinction event. Saving all of humanity, that's a pretty good goal for him to be spending his money on. Jeff Bezos is using some of his own wealth. He wants to move heavy industry off of Earth into space and sort of keep the Earth as more of a protected zone. That's a great goal as well too, right? So, but to get to those long-term goals, you gotta start somewhere. And the first step is flying people safely to space. So 
I know a lot of the coverage has just been about wealthy people flying into space, and I think that's okay. That's perfectly fine for one thing, but you have to look long term. All of these companies and all these actors, they have a longer term view. The freaky thing about this is that once you get far enough away from the Earth, there's absolutely no incentive for them and their colony and the people they control there to be bound by any Earth nation state's laws. These would probably be sort of like private mining colonies. But once you get to a place where you can't really talk to anybody outside of it and your boss owns all your food and water and now in the case of these potential space colonies, oxygen, the opportunity for being in a sort of indentured servitude type state is, is is really high. I mean, I can't exaggerate just how horrible this would be for like the workers there and the possibility that they could be sort of indentured servants or virtually even slaves. I mean, you can't really quit your job if you're living on Mars and your boss owns your oxygen. You can't really strike in that case either. And I wouldn't call these people humanists by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think appealing to their humanity is gonna work when you're toiling away in the iron mines on Mars.